Okay, so we talked about innate defenses, or I made some videos about the innate defenses here, whoops, where you have barriers, and then you have internal defenses that are nonspecific. Nonspecific meaning they don't care what tries to invade your body, they're just going to get rid of it. You have another set of defenses, and those are called the adaptive or the specific defenses. These ones are the ones you have to actually acquire. So that's why they're called also called uh, acquired immunity. It's you have to be exposed to something in order to make this immunity happen. All right. So since you would be exposed to something, an, an antigen, a pathogen, you want to start two different types of immune processes. One is humoral, and this is fluid. So in this case, what that means is you're going to search fluid for any sort of foreign invader, and then you're also going to protect fluid. How we're going to protect fluid is we're going to use our B cells. B cells are going to make antibodies. And if you recall, antibodies are plasma proteins. They float around in blood, okay? But because we have pathogens that do much more than just float around in blood, they also invade cells like viruses. We're gonna need cellular immunity. I mean, I hope I really shouldn't have to write cells, but that's what cellular immunity means. In this case, we're gonna use T cells or T lymphocytes. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna target infected cells. and they remove them. Really, they target infected cells and they tell them they have to kill themselves. Sometimes they do that and sometimes they release chemicals to kill the cells specifically, right? So you have to think about how these, def these uh, adaptive defenses or acquired defenses work versus the innate defenses. And what that also means is like anything you've ever been exposed to you have memory of that, and that's part of your adaptive defenses. So here's where um, we also have to think about, there's two different types of lymphatic organs, which I kind of forgot about talking about right here in this very first part is the third part of the um, lymphatic system functions is essentially a defense system. So we have primary organs and we have secondary organs. In this case, these are our secondary organs. The secondary organs are the ones that are gonna store our lymphocytes and some of our, like some of our white blood cells, lymphocytes mostly and macrophages until they get activated, okay? Before they get activated, we have primary organs. Those primary organs are going to make and mature lymphocytes, okay? The main organ that makes all the white blood cells is red bone marrow. It's not really an organ, it's more of a tissue, but we're gonna call it an organ. I was like, is it made of multiple tissues? Yeah, it's an organ, okay. The other one is the thymus gland. So the thymus gland helps us mature T cells, whereas B cells are going to continue to mature in the bone marrow, right? What happens is your um, B cells and your T cells are going to mature, and then they have to move and migrate. As they move and migrate, they're going to be stored in, this is a lymph node, or the spleen. So what I want you to think about is how are you going to activate these cells to kill a specific enemy? Talked about this in class, how uh, lymphocytes or really all your white blood cells are soldiers. It depends on whether or not they recognize um, specific enemies and target them, or they just say, oh, you're an enemy, I'm going to get rid of you. Lymphocytes actually are going to be activated to seek and destroy a specific enemy, okay? So in order to do that, you have to activate them. You have to train them beyond basic training to spot their enemy and then repeatedly go after that enemy. To do that activation, 
you have to move your lymphocytes into either a lymph node or into the spleen in order for this to happen. You can do it in the tonsils, the pyrus patches, the appendix, all, all that, any secondary organ really. But we're just gonna focus on the lymph node, okay? So on my picture here, I want you to understand, whoops, this, I kind of made a key. This is my macrophage. And then I have two different blue cells. The two different blue cells are T cells or T lymphocytes. Why do I have two different ones? Because you, you make two populations of T cells. And then the purple ones, these are my B cells, okay? I think I did this backwards in office hours, but it's, uh, it's besides the point. It doesn't matter what color they are, okay? So what you wanna think about is maybe you have a virus. That's my virus. This virus, um, is going to enter into the lymph node because remember the point of the lymph node is to filter lymph. So if the virus needs to move around the body, the best way to do it is using a highway system and that's either lymph or blood. So if this were the spleen, this would be filtering blood. Since this is a lymph node, we're filtering lymph, okay? So my virus enters the lymph node and what it's going to do is it's going to activate my B cells and my T cells that are here in this area. And actually I have that over there, but that's besides the point. So you wanna think about the activation that I'm gonna talk about in the two other videos I'm going to make about this is happening inside of the lymph node, okay? Here are my body cells. Body cells are gonna be important because remember the virus, will attach to the body cell and then its DNA enters and you can create more viruses using this body cell. And that's what an infected cell is going to be. Usually when a body cell is infected, it will have a specific antigen. It will, it usually has an antigen change on the surface to uh, basically tell the immune system, hey, I need you to come take care of this because I can't take care of this on my own, okay? So I want you to think about all those things as we go through T lymphocyte activation and B lymphocyte activation. 